This PSA was brought to you by the Peter G Show. You may have second thoughts after this show. But don't drink the Foster. <laughs> well, we're really talented. We should get Oscars. Just <laughs> pick out a car for Christ's sake. No, I'm more of high money than Peter. Yeah, I want. I want. I want. Here's good. Here's- Ah, yeah, yeah. Adam Perry. I need to get back in the bottle. <laughs> from Pennsylvania, you're on. He likes it. It's show time. That's right. It is showtime and no better time than showtime. Don't you agree? Wednesday, the first day of May 2024, May 1st, and love is in the air. It's springtime. The birds are chirping. The sun is shining and I feel good. How the hell is everybody? I hope you're doing well. My name is Peter G and you're watching Life with Peter G, the Peter G show. Every Wednesday, like clockwork, 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central, and 9 p.m. on the East Coast. Almost messed myself up, but that's good. God willing, every week. So I'm glad for whoever's tuning in to tune in and those who will be tuning in and watching in the future. I love you. I do. I know life is full of choices. Plenty of things to do, but yet you make the time to watch little old me, and I... Very much appreciate that. Hope everybody's doing very well in these crazy times that we're living in. Any of you who watched last week's show would have been witness to me going off. It was one of those shows where I get it by myself and I talk about current events. And boy, do I go. And uh, I make a lot of people happy and I make a lot of people very, very miserable. There's a lot of nasty people in the world. I'd love to comment and call me names, but I can't help it. And I will not apologize. You'll either figure it out or you won't. I respect your opinion. I'm just bringing a few things uh, to the forefront that you may not realize. But then again, some men you just can't reach. And then again, there are those who are sitting on the fence and might go, hmm. You know, it's a good possibility. Peter might have something there. I do it for your benefit. Because I do realize life is busy and everybody's not paying attention. And that's the problem. We are living in times that you really need to pay attention. I, too, was lost only but about 10 years ago. And thanks by the grace of God and a few very close friends of mine, little by little, I was led to see the light. And I did. And I'm glad because I have a child. Well, she's not really a child, but she's grown, but she's still my child. And I want to see her grow up in a decent world. So that's why we're here. But tonight, because tonight is a special night. I'm going back to the goodness of life, love. Tonight, I'm very fortunate to have back on this show. It's been a while, almost two years ago. Professional matchmaker and love coach right here on this show, Miss Patricia Fuqua. And she's going to be with us uh, for those who are seriously looking for love. I mean, seriously looking for love, you know, not hookups and things like that. These are people who, you know, we get older. It's hard. Uh, She's going to explain it all to you. But, I mean, she finds the combinations. I don't know how she does it. I'm going to ask her all about that stuff. It's been a while. We talked about it, you know, almost two years ago. But uh, she's going to explain everything. And, you know, sometimes you got to put up or shut up. And and this is the right woman. She She's a specialist. Everybody needs to specialize in something nowadays. And that's why we have her on the show. So she's coming up in just a few short minutes. I also want to tell you, next week, <laughs> I'm mixing it up. I, I went so heavy last week that I want to lighten things up for the next couple of shows. But um, that's what happens every last show of the month. I do those current events, and it's deep. It's a lot of problems going on. So I'm, I don't hold back anymore. If they ban me from some of these platforms, they do, you know. Take a number. I'm not the first. I won't be the last. But anyway, next week, speaking of serious, 
Next week, I'm going to have comedian Rodney Norman on the show. Okay. The king of awesomeness. The king of super awesomeness. He'll be taking a break from uh, trying to save the world. And he's going to be on this show. And it's going to be a lot of fun because he's... When I first saw him, I didn't know what to make of him. I thought he was just some confused guy. But he's a very um, philosophical guy in a confused guy's body. That's all I can tell you. So you're not going to want to miss that. Next week, Rodney Norman. Comedian Rodney Norman. We might talk some serious stuff, too, because he actually is a pretty serious guy, but uh, he knows how to take the seriousness and put it in a very um, philosophical, in his words, awesome way. So you might want to prepare for that because we're all going to have a little fun with him, and I'm glad he's going to be on the show. Uh, I don't know if any of you are paying attention because I always wonder sometimes, and we're going through a lot of problems on our college campuses right now. My daughter is, is a little bit away from college, but uh, about another year or so, but I'm glad she's not on these campuses right now because we got some craziness going on. But um, all I can say is protesting is one thing, and uh, but and colleges have always been that kind of a thing, you know, that you're young people and things like that. But I've also learned that young people are very gullible and they just jump on bandwagons to jump on bandwagons. And I'm watching a lot of these different news interviews and for the ones they can get to talk, they can't answer any questions on why they're doing what they're doing. And this is my problem. It's one thing if you believe in what you're doing and you know what you're doing and you're doing it because you understand it and you're behind it. But I have yet to see any of these people who are supporting this protest have an answer when questioned. Besides some generic, it's irrelevant, or these kind of things. They can't answer anything. And, and the mask wearing bothers me a lot because if you believe in what you're doing, you don't have to hide your face. Unless you're hiding your face from mommy and daddy because they're going to be pissed because they're paying your tuition. Again, peaceful protest is one thing, but people are getting hurt now. And these are American people. Students wanting to get to class. It's testing time. It's graduation time. You're screwing it up for everybody. But the big people in the back, you know, buying all the tents and everything. Everybody's got matching tents. Like, like this is really a, a you know, off the wall protest. It's all put together. But let's uh, pay attention. Again, enough is enough. That's what we got to start saying. Enough is enough. Because uh, I don't think these 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 kids don't know how to adult yet. That's all I'm saying about that, because otherwise that's a whole nother show. Just had to bring that up because it's filling the news and we're forgetting all about everything else, like the thousands a day coming over the borders, our wars going on, we're spending more money. But hey, what do I know? Here's what's going to happen. I also want to remind you, thank you for watching the Peter G Show, but please, please, please subscribe. Even these people right here that are constantly throttling me down and shadow banning me and not letting me be seen, I still want you to subscribe to them. I'm going to beat them at their own game, or they're going to completely take me down, whichever. But whatever platform you're watching on, make sure you please follow, like, share, all that stuff. I need your help because I'm battling. You know, Everything's fine and dandy until I start speaking some things that, uh, that they don't agree with, which in my opinion is the truth, and we're just being censored, and I don't dig it. And I need your help if you like what you're seeing and hearing. Please can't talk about anything anymore you can't have an opinion anymore without google and these people just saying no that's not going to work and they wipe you out it's a sad state that we're living in but please and again for those of you who watch the show but or try to watch the show but you know life is busy i get it a lot of people are commuting it's you know in some parts of the country over here it's only a little after six o'clock at night and and people are in their cars commuting a gazillion miles in the los angeles area to get to work or get home from work Put an earbud in your ear. Google Peter G Show podcast. You can listen to the show on demand or live, whatever you want, on 26 different platforms. It's on your, you know, your Apple podcast, your Spotify, as you name it. It's there. Easy to find. So I love when you watch. Please like and share and all that. And same thing with the podcast, too. Please subscribe, okay? I appreciate it. I go through a lot of trouble to try to bring this to you. Again, you can't please everybody. But for those that do, I love you for it. And please help, okay? Uh Here's what we're going to do. We are going to be bringing Patricia on in just a few minutes. But first, before we get to Patricia, I want to hear and I want you guys to hear from my good friends over at Clean Star Products with their money-saving fuel additive DX1 driver. I'll be back in a minute. 
I'm Tyrone Thompson of CleanStarProducts.com. This is DX1 Driver in the news, and here's what our friends have to say. So I'm here to uh, recap on a DX1 I've, I've used. I put it in, in oil and I put it in the gas. While I'm using it, just for about three tanks, cleaned everything out. I got every ounce of power back in my truck. When Jared's truck was new, it had a lot of power. Then over time, it began to slow down. He got it all back with our DX1 driver program. Something you gotta see for yourself. It's a great product, it's affordable, and it blows all the other additives and esters out of the water. DX1 driver is the finest oil in the world from a California environmental company. It goes into the fuel system and the oil. It's the only green grade product qualified for the carbon credits program, giving you better fuel mileage, lower emissions, and increased horsepower. So join the fuel savings revolution today. Go to cleanstarproducts.com slash shop. That's right, folks. Clean Star Products. I can tell you one thing. They actually have a product that works. I am a user of the DX1 driver. I have a high mileage vehicle and it works on all vehicles. But all I can tell you is especially the older ones, because let's face it, cars are super expensive. Even the new cars, they don't make them as good as they used to. And that's sad thing. Again, a lot of sad stuff going on. I'm, I'm bumming myself out. <laughs> and uh, I noticed the difference between, you know, it only took a couple of tanks full of this. You, you take one of these little bottles right here, pour it in the clean oil change. This lasts the whole oil change. You put it in your crankcase. And then every time you fill up your tank, you put one of these little bottles in your gas tank. And when you fuel up again, you put another one. And it cleans everything out. It brings back all that horsepower, more lubricity. Uh, all, all I can say is I noticed the difference, and my daughter even noticed the difference when she drove my truck. I got a, I got a Ford F-150 that I just will never, ever let go. I brought my daughter home from the hospital in that truck. It's old, but it looks great, and it runs great. And, uh, and this makes it run even better. So listen, I know you're going to have some questions. Go to www.cleanstarproducts.com. There's a phone number on their website. Call Ty Thompson directly. He's got a direct line because he wants to answer your questions personally. Okay? They, are, uh, uh, they have a product and they care. And after you talk to him, should you want to order, you decide to order, here's the deal. Mention you saw it on the Peter G Show, and you will get five bottles Ready? Five bottles for the price of four. That's right, folks. Five bottles for the price of four. If you mentioned that you saw it on the Peter G Show, again, they know what I do and they still sponsor me. So God bless them. But they actually have a product that works and it's a clean, it passes California emissions. And if it'll pass California emissions, it'll pass anything. So, you know, they're eco-conscious, the whole deal. And on top of that, you'll save up 10% in fuel mileage and your car's going to run better. And take care of your body, and your body will take care of you. It just makes sense to save money, all right? Cleanstarproducts.com. Go call Ty. Tell him you saw it on the Peter G Show. Promise you, you got nothing to lose and all to gain. And if anything, it takes better care of your car. You and gas is expensive. Oh, I just spent $140 on a full tank of gas. Let that sink in. Welcome to California. All right, let's take a sip. We're going to bring Patricia on in just a second. If she didn't leave already, she said, oh, enough of this guy. <laughs> Here we go. I love you guys. Salute. Woo. Smooth. All right. Without further ado, I promised you that love is in the air because it's the first of May. It's springtime and nothing better than bringing the woman who understands this and believes in love more than most people in this world from the East Coast side of the country, from Hotlanta. Ladies and gentlemen. Patricia Fuqua. Hi. Yay. 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 Thank you for coming on tonight. Oh, you're quite welcome. It's my pleasure. I, uh, I, I, I don't know if you were watching or not, but I, I pretty much told people you, you were on almost two years ago. I think it was September or October, two years ago. Time we, flies. We, it really yeah. does. Yeah. Time does fly. And that's the whole thing. And prior to that, I had been chasing you down probably for about two years because I originally saw you 
through LinkedIn or something like that. And I really wanted to get you on because I, I wanted what you do on this show because I think it's so important because happiness is second to none. Can't beat it. It no, makes the world I want, well, it makes things it, better in the world. We have so many. Make, yeah. Who wants to be, you know, we get older, people divorce or, or just don't have the right relationship and it gets really, really hard. But I just, I just happiness to me, you know, everybody I think wants somebody in their life, but everybody doesn't have that look. Why don't we do this real quick to refresh those, even me, uh, why don't you take, uh, we take a second and I want you to just introduce yourself, tell everybody who you are, what you do, how long you've been doing it, you know, just a quick synopsis. So, and then we'll get into some deep stuff. Okay. Well, you know how some women are very, very professional and very accomplished in their work and they have everything they want in life, except that personal relationship. They need a little nudge to get that going. Well, I help them find and date the man of their dreams without going to look for love in all the wrong places. And I also help some men to do the same. How long have you been doing it for, Patricia? I've been doing it since 2008. And since COVID, I've been moving online and so it's a different ball game online and that involves me nurturing people and letting them know that i can help them find the love of their life when they're interested and open and do to doing that yeah I, look it's not easy hang on one second because uh, i appreciate this this is bill i don't know bill but i i, I welcome bill he What's this all about? I just tuned in. Well, thank you for tuning in. But uh, tonight is all about love. I have Patricia Fuqua sitting right in front of us from Hotlanta, GA. She is a professional matchmaker and love coach. So, Bill, this might be perfect for you. And if it's not, well, watch anyway. That's all I can say. <laughs> we always learn something. All right. So let, let's go back. I just wanted to make sure Bill felt um, at home. Uh, all right. You've been doing this. Okay, look, let's face it. We're not in our teens. We're not 20 anymore. Lots of people have gone through all kinds of things from being widowed to, you know, just divorces, have kids, you get lost in your kids, all kinds of things like that. It gets hard. You nobody's, you know, not everybody's hanging out in bars at our age or you don't want to or they feel scared. They just you you get so reclusive. You don't go out anymore. You, you know, you're helping mostly professional people. I know a lot of business people are so busy, women as well, that they, they just don't find the time for this. Is that what you're kind of doing? Yes, I'm the person who will help you get your dating online profile into an irresistible state because I believe that that is your... That is the first thing that anybody on a dating app site looks at is that online dating profile. So that has to be on point. It has to have a slice of your life. It has to have photos that match the words that you use. You need to use the right words and be in outfits and posed in ways that are more most attractive for you those are just about three of the tips for writing an irresistible dating online profile but i noticed that a lot of my clients come to me and they haven't had the time to really take a look at what kind of lifestyle they would actually like to live with this partner so what i do is we have a personality assessment it takes about two hours and I get to know them almost as well as their mother. And then I can take all of that information and tweak the dating profile if they've already written it or rewrite it to in a way that it is more attractive to the kind of man or woman that they want to attract into their lives. Now that's very important because it's like the first impression and, you know, we only get seven seconds to make a favorable first impression. 
so that people want to see more of us or learn more about us. So we have to make sure that that online dating profile with its pictures and its words and its description is absolutely attractive. Okay. Now here's where Peter comes in with devil's advocate. I don't know if you remember from the last show, but it's all starting to come back to me now. I'm going to be, uh, because, you know, dating and websites and, and dating sites and all that. If I had a nickel for every guy and or girl who said the person they met did not look like the picture, you know, when they finally met up with them, you know, it was a picture from 20 years ago or a picture that was 30 pounds ago or that kind of a st thing. You know, these are the bad things that go on and happen. Uh, now, there are some good things, but a lot of trial and error when you're doing it on those, you know, match.coms and all that kind of stuff without any verification, correct? Well, it can well, be like that, but with the help of uh, a dating coach such as myself, right. Right. I believe that we have to be authentic. If we want to attract an authentic partner that is best for us, we have to be authentic. So I don't allow my clients to put up um, pictures from 10 years ago or, you know, 30 right. pounds ago because... Nobody's interested in the past in that way. It's better right. to be pre presented authentically in, a, in your most attractive way so that when you meet the, the person, they can recognize you, right? I even right. suggest that they wear a an outfit that they had in the profile to meet them for the first time so it's an easily recognizable thing. I think mm -hmm. that people who do that kind of thing 30 pounds uh, less or whatever they do to kind of uh, lie, for lack of a better term, are True. insecure. And yeah. when I work with people, I like them to be confident, authentic, and attractive and just present who they are so they can be loved for who they truly are. And it saves a lot of time and effort. Hmm. Ultimately, yes, I agree with you because look, I, I remember, I, I can't remember who I was talking to. It was, some, it was a friend of mine, a woman, and she said she met some guy. They talked for a long time. She met him at a bar or restaurant bar or whatever. And when she got there, she, you know, what do you say when the guy doesn't look the same? And it happens, I believe me, it definitely happens for a lot of women, for guys that happen to, you know, with women. Right. And, and, and she says, well, I, I stuck around. I didn't want to be rude because you're kind of like, what do you do now? It's like you yeah. say, hey, you know, you're lying. This is, you don't look like this. I was wanting to meet up with this person, not this person, even though it's the same person. Yeah. And, yeah. and you get in that bad predicament and it kind of, you know, it's a lot of trial and error that way. So you're kind of cutting through all that baloney, making sure they're staying true to themselves and vice versa with the possible ne next person, correct? Exactly. You know, there's nothing better than authenticity because the people that I work with are seriously interested in relationship and they don't want to waste a lot of time. They're busy. They may be professional. So when they want to bring a partner into their life to enjoy the good life with, they don't want to have to deal with people who are inauthentic, let's say that. Yeah, I, I get that. But yeah. <laughs> Like I said, it, it, it's um, most people who are, you know, go to some little app or de you know, device and whether it's Tinder or Match.com or Christian Singles or, uh, you, you know, you know, there's a million of them out there. And don't yeah. think about somebody like you because they want everybody wants something for nothing. You know what I mean? It's like every but yet the at the end result, it ended up costing them mentally and physically and financially. Because you go through all that drama and expense of meeting a million people and still not happy. Well, that's the thing with the online dating profile. When we um, create it in the way that I am working with, it cuts through all of that. Just like, I don't know, a hot butter, hot knife through butter. Because basically the idea is to present the woman to present herself in a way that this is who I am and this is what I enjoy. And if you would like this too, come and join me. And so 
the the idea is to if you know the dating sites is to have the protocol of going through the communication you know you can text you can contact them some of them you can do video calls so there's all of that protocol that comes before actually meeting them in person so you get a feel for the person and um, i teach people how to communicate in such a way to find out if there are similar values and priorities before they actually meet someone. But you have to meet them in person just to know how they really are because people can be good on paper, look good on paper, sound good in, on a film. And then when you meet them, you go, oh my God, what did they do? So you have to meet them in person to make the final decision if you want to have a second date. That's the whole purpose of the first date to find out if you want a second one. No, I, I get it. And again, I think texting back and forth and um, the just, you know, correspondence, people start to fantasize and build things up in their own heads that might not even be there. But because you're not actually seeing, you know, and really getting that one on one, you're you just start creating your own fantasy in your head. Uh, you know, I mean, you're telling me I'm gonna, uh, that, you know, you find out what these people like, like, let's say, hi, my name is Peter. I like long walks on the beach. I love to travel. I love, you know, this, I love to do all this stuff. The thing is, oh, hi, I, my name is Peter. I can't afford to do this stuff, but I really love doing it. That's a lot of people, you know, it's, th mm -hmm. this is what I find. Well, you know, again, it's about um, authenticity. You know, you're giving me the devil's advocate about the people who are presenting themselves in a way that's not exactly down to earth and truthful. And so what I like to do is to teach people how to determine what's down and earth and truthful about the person on the other side of the dining table or the video or what have you. And in conversation, there is a way to get to the nitty gritty to see if this is what that person is really like. One of my clients um, had, a, uh, I want to say a bow, but that's an old fashioned word. I don't think anybody uses it anymore. But she was in a relationship with somebody and he had a very active, fascinating life. But after dating him a couple of times, she realized that that's what he used to do. And he no longer did those things. So it was kind of like her eyes were open that, oh, the truth of the matter is he's not the way he presented himself today. And so she had to make the decision if she want, wanted to continue in the relationship or to cut it off. And she, can, she decided to discontinue it. Yeah, things change. People change. Uh, lifestyles change. Finances change. I mean, look, I don't think I'm being uh, on. Uh, 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 I don't think I'd be or somebody be lying if they said I like going to the beach. I like to travel. I mean, they who doesn't? I mean, well, some people don't, but most people like to. The thing is, I've always said. If I had enough money that if I had a woman that I truly enjoyed, I wouldn't care if if she didn't do anything providing we were happy. I mean, life's full of choices, you know, and, but it, it, to me, it's like, yes, do you know, you, but I find that as we get older, a lot of people are looking at self-worth. It's like, okay, I got this. What are you bringing to the table? I mean, especially for a guy, it's hard, I think, to find a woman who's doing su substantially well and to, to say, well, I can't afford her. I mean, you know, she's, she's out of my league, even though they might be happy together. It's, it's a tough one. How do you match that kind of stuff up? Again, we go back to values and priorities. Um, you know, um, if a woman, well, let me just give you an example. I had a client who was doing very well and she met this fella who wasn't doing that well, but he was able to be with her for a year or two or three, I forget how long it was. And they were able to travel and to do all those things. But gradually she started to um pay for more and more things first it was 
dinner, Dutch. And then it was, if they wanted to go somewhere, she would pick up the tab. And so she got tired of it because even though she could afford to take him with her, she was raised as a conventional woman and she expected the man to be the protector and the provider and to pay for things. And this fella could not. He was very charming. He was very sweet. She said she had some of the most happiest times in her life, but she tired of always having to pay the bill. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the woman and, True. you know, and how long the relationship is going to last. I mean, if somebody's just plat out, she like you, you end up meeting somebody who's just a, not a scammer, but you know, they're, they're a good smooth talker and they, and, and they, they were looking for that free ride. That's one thing. But it ends up like sometimes you have this good, hardworking person, but they're just at a different level. And who, uh, who was it that said water seeks its own level? You know what I mean? You kind of find that. But I find that like if you truly like enjoy this person's company and you're happy around this person. But, you know, this is just the, the, the financial status. I mean, you get some people like, you know, well, they better be up to the here or forget it. And so it's that hard, questionable where do you know? I guess it's based on the individual and what they want out of life, I guess. But I mean, I hate to throw the baby out with the bathwater when you have two great people, but money is the separating factor and things like that. And not because of laziness or that. It's just because that's the way life is. You know, two people can work out any kind of arrangement that they want because they're adults, right? And so, again, it's the priorities. If the woman really wants the companionship as a pro, priority and this man provides what it is that she really wants, then she can probably, you know, maybe shrug and say, well, you know, it doesn't matter that he doesn't have the, all the money that I would need to feel that he was the same level as I am. But how would the guy feel? You know, guys have been programmed to be providers, protectors, mm -hmm. to have the most money to take care of, of their loved ones. But so how does he feel being kind of like um, taken care of? I mean, you know, so there's the way people are raised and what they can accept. If they can make their own rules about the relationship, then we might have a, a match. But generally, um, it doesn't work. As a guy, again, if I had, you know, I, if I had somebody that, again, you know, it's a lot of trial and error, but I don't like really the gold digging stuff, but... If I had somebody, I go, look, I got more money I know what to do with. I don't care what the hell they have. It's not going to make or break me. We're kind of happy and life is good, you know, but on from a woman's perspective, I find that a lot less. And and again, I understand the whole man, you know, male ego and all that stuff. But sometimes I, I have found these people like the guys, the stay at home dad, the wife's out making them and, and it works. And, you know, the, to me, it's, but we've gotten so busy and that everybody's just, you know, separated and apart and, and all that gets lost in translation somehow, or I don't know, happens. You know, I, and the world has changed. All those conventional roles of man and woman have changed mm -hmm. over the years. Yeah. And people may be a little confused and there may be people of a certain age who believe that the roles should still be there. Man is the provider protector woman is the nurturer but you know the way the the world is going these days those rules have changed somewhat do you agree oh no i do i i i think i, I definitely agree that there's a lot of confused people out there yeah yeah <laughs> but i think we've lost our way in a lot of ways not necessarily in the you know for adults adults but I'm I'm scared to death of what's of the the youth that uh, the generations that are coming up that are going to be running this country or this world. But I want to ask you uh, specifically. I mean, I'm kind of covering a lot of bases, but and it might seem redundant. But I want to get a little more specific right now. Who exactly uh, do you help find partners? You're dealing mostly with women. I heard you say that you do some men, but mm -hmm. women, but. Um, I guess level type are, are these uh, business women, people who are like, because I have another person who was on the show and he dealt specifically with, you know, high end women who make a lot of money and they just don't have time to, to, to find dating kind of stuff. I mean, who are you dealing with? I deal with women who are maybe professional career 
they need to to be affluent have di disposable income because working with a love coach a dating coach is a luxury most people go through life trying to figure it out themselves by trial and error and they may uh, take longer than it would working with me or one of my co colleagues so um, I I help women over 40 who may be professional, but certainly they need to be ambitious and, and, and affluent enough to support me helping them. Because if they wanna do matchmaking, matchmaking is truly a luxury and it involves having to decide if you are a possible client, if you wanna have a search locally that is within 25 miles of your house, if you want it to be national throughout the country, or if you want it global. So you see the price goes up because as a matchmaker, we're connected in this global network and we know people all over the world. And so we would contact our colleagues and say, I have someone who wants A, B, and C, who do you know? And usually those colleagues work by commission. So it, it, it can get quite pricey if you want a matchmaker, but then you don't have to do the dates yourself, arrange the dates yourself. You have somebody working for you. Look, I, I, to me, this is no different than spending money on a physical trainer, you know, exercise trainer, or, or any other type of thing. I mean, just because they may be successful in business, they might stink when it comes to getting out there and, and, you know, needing the help. Look, if I had, I've met girls that I've grown up with and, and again, not a lot here to work with. Okay. So that's the, the big problem. But when we were younger, I've talked to people that I've known in my past and they go, God, I used to have a crush on you. And I'm going, you did because I wouldn't have known, you know, and I was shyer too. So all these opportunities get passed. Not everybody is that good at being, forthcoming and, and just going and going for, I know people who are relentless, you know, they'll turn around to one woman that's sitting at a bar and if she turns them down, he'll turn right next to the next one and move right on. It's a, you know, and do the numbers game, which yeah. blows my mind. I was never that guy, but so having somebody like you and spending the money to do something that's so important in your life to have somebody possibly that's going to, you know, to, you're going to spend the rest of your life with or in, or in hopes of, uh, I don't see any, you know, that, that again, didn't I tell you the other day when we were talking on the phone, people spend money where they want to spend it. Of course, you know, there's no lack of money. If people want to, it's again, the priorities and the values, people spend money where they want to spend it. And yeah. so it's like, if you have some sort of heart condition, you're not going to spend it on somebody who does, um, gastrointestinal work. I mean, that doesn't make sense. So you usually want the best specialist that you can get. And that's what a matchmaker is. And that's what a love coach is, a specialist. That's what we do. We live and breathe matching people in the best possible way so that they'll be happy. That's our job. And you've been doing this, you said, since about 2008, correct? Yes. So do you keep up with uh, some of the clients? I mean, to have those like testimonials or, I mean, it's probably some horror stories as well. I mean, life is life, but uh, uh, which I'd love to hear. I do uh, keep up with them. In fact, I've asked them to tell me when they get engaged, when they get married. Just recently, I received an email from someone who told me that she had just celebrated her 10th wedding anniversary from someone she'd met shortly after she completed completed a program of mine. And I was so happy for her because uh, she was, it's, it's, I'm just really, really thrilled about it. She called me a miracle worker. And the idea is you, that is the client needs to know what it is that, that is important to them what lifestyle they want to have. And then when they meet the gentleman, they know how to converse with him to find out if he has anything in common with them on those value levels. That's the glue that holds people together is those priorities and those values. You don't have to agree on everything and that's impossible mm -hmm. because we're not clones about of one another, right? 
So, yeah. but at least three top values are important to agree upon. Why don't you, uh, I want to ask you, and you, you can answer me or not answer me, but this is a little bit, I just, I don't know, while you were talking, I come up with all the odds. Have you had the weird uh, stipulations? I mean, people that are like, hey, I like this and I'm, you know, I'm kind of kinky or I'm, I like a lot. I have to have somebody with a high sex drive. Do they come to you like that or are they just pretty conventional when they come to you? I mean, there's all kinds of people and sex is a big part of life, period. But there's some who are way more over the top than others. You know what I mean? Some are very mental, you know, and all the above. Do you get some of the... Uh, the Higher requests. So mostly with women, what we do is we talk in terms of love languages, and women who have a high uh, who have a high score on touch generally yeah. really like sex, and so they are looking for that as um, one of their major priorities. And so, so they do come. To, they do ask for that. Yes, I mean good. You know, Need to be honest Good. with me so I can help you. Don't, <laughs> don't right. miss words. <laughs> right. Wow. Good. Because uh, you know, again, it goes either. Some people I've known, some women that sex is a low priority. You know, men too. You know, I mean, or men. You know, things change, and uh, you know, again, priorities change, and th some people the way it goes. But I know that there's a lot of people that's a big that is like top of the list. It's like there's the sex and then there's the mental capacity and you know, but it's all one. It all kind of relates and, and comes into one big giant ball of happiness, you know, if it's all working right. Yeah, it it it's important to know what your priorities are. I can't emphasize that enough. You know, if that's yeah. a priority, then we need to know so that we can make the right choices. Um I wanted to ask you, so with the women that you talk to, what do you think is their biggest obstacle? What is what do you get like a, a, a like a, a, a poll of like when do you ask them like, you know, what have you been doing? What has stopped you from having a relationship or how, you know, what would you anything like that? Am I making any sense? Yes. What has happened is that when I ask women, what have you been what do you want? How long have you been looking? What do you think the biggest obstacle is? The biggest obstacle that comes up is that um, the way they're thinking about dating and about men and about relationship. For example, a woman sat down with me and she said, there are no good men, Patricia. I've been looking for 16 years Boy. and my friends married them, all of them. And I said, well, how many do you want? And she said, one, and I said, okay, let's get started. We can make that happen. And so basically the idea is if you have that kind of thought that there are no good men for you, you get to be right. We live on the planet of whatever we think about the most is what is going to happen. And so, you know, she was keeping herself in a box mm -hmm. and I helped her shift her thinking to, she only needed to find one good man. And that's what we did. I helped her shift her thinking. I call it stinking thinking. And I sent her to her favorite town, to a fancy hotel with, you know, entertainment. And I said, dress well and don't take your friends and see what happens. Just be open to who was there. The celebrity who was entertaining at that hotel came into the lobby, stopped everything because people wanted his autograph. She was backed up against this tall, handsome man long enough for him to really be interested in knowing her a little bit more. So after the celebrity passed through, he invited her for a drink. And before she knew it, she was engaged in six months. And in 12 months, she was married. And in 18 months, they were divorced. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Just... No. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, uh, I just, I just, 
when you said, you know, I, I was thinking celebrity. I'm going, yeah, celebrity stuff is hard, man. Entertainment is hard life, and it doesn't doesn't work as easily as it, the, the the dream. But uh, okay, well, uh, again, you know, to me, I just always wondering, you know, wh with uh, with women, like, because the one thing I've learned. Hang on a second, because I got to do this. The one thing I've learned with women is that I am not, and I repeat, I am not a mind reader. And, you know, what I've found that I just quit worrying about wondering, you know, what's going on in their heads or, or anything, because sometimes it's the farthest from what you can ever imagine. I just let things go the way they go. And that's it. But really, in a woman's head, like I, I could be standing next to some, uh, to a girl, a woman, girl, whatever, whatever you want to put it. And I'll be going, God, she's really, really attractive. But I won't say nothing. And, and that happens to a lot of people. If that man that she was backed up against, it, had he not said something, another blown opportunity. And that's the problem because you, you think, ah, she wouldn't be interested in me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that has to do with um, confidence. Yeah, but look what I got to work with. It's not easy being me. You know? Oh, no. You're, you're wonderful. Yeah. I love look. the way you look. That's, and that's the older camera. you get, the better you get. So That's the camera. That's the you camera. Know, come on. <laughs> I'm kidding. But, but the, the thing is, again, you know, you don't know what's going on in each individual's head. Uh, the, the, they've always heard the, the, the thing, the, the pretty girls are always home on Saturday nights. That's a lot of truth to a lot of that. Not all, but there's a lot of truth to that. Like you're thinking, God, God she must have men dropping at her feet and she's at home with nobody. Yes, because, you know, there's this whole dance that goes on between men and women. And I like to help my women encourage men to approach them by smiling at them. There's nothing like a friendly smile to let a guy know that you're interested in him and open to the approach. If she's frowning or serious, you may not have think that you have a chance with her. So there's a two, there's two, a communication going on, even though you're not using words. And so I make people aware of that silent communication that goes on so that they can benefit from meeting interesting people. You have your work cut out because I think majority of the people need work on eye contact. I walk a lot uh, for my health, so to speak, because I like getting out. I clear my head for about two hours a day. And I cross people all the time. And I make a point to say hello to everybody. But there's some people every once in a while, they could be three feet away from me, be either male or female. And it's like, hi. And they're just looking. And it's like they don't even pay attention because they're just that kind of a person that doesn't want to. I, I don't know. I don't I don't get it because it bugs the hell out of me. But that's, yeah. you know, a lot of people. Yes, I, 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 I know how you feel. And um, you should move to the south because <laughs> everybody is always saying hello to you whenever you walk in where you can't walk anywhere without the southern hospitality taking over. I find that's true. Whenever I'm very, I walk. Yeah, I'm aware of the south. I mean, I grew up in the south and I spend a lot of time in the south. But unfortunately, you know, I'm, I'm not there all the time. And I do honestly, I do. I am more comfortable down there. And you're kind of right. But may, I, I attribute it because I know so many people down there. But it is a different mentality. And but I live in an area I'm not like in L.A. L.A. I when my my home is, you know, outside of uh, L.A. and in an area that I think is pretty more normal. It's amazing how when you get out of the jungle part of it, things change dramatically. 40, 50 miles makes a big difference to where you, you know, you. Okay, it's not the South, but it's definitely not, you know, the, that, the L.A. thing and the mm -hmm. coldness. And I used to, um, as, as a musician, when I was a musician most of my life, you'd meet a lot of these girls in these clubs. And I swear, within the first, hey, how you doing, or a couple of minutes, it's, so what do you do for a living? You know, they're already, like, wanting to know if I'm going to be interesting enough or, or attractive enough by, uh, by my, you know, what I do for a living. I, yeah. And that drives, yeah. that drives me nuts. Well, they're they're cutting to the chase, and uh, you know that's that's the personality of some women. They just want to cut to the chase. There is a dance that is more attractive if you if you just get to know somebody before you jump into their business about how they make money, and when 
people can take it slower in that dance, then the chances increase for no, a I, relationship. I would avoid it at all costs back then because it was like, I was doing okay, but I just didn't like the, you know, to where I got more attractive by my wallet, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? I just, because yeah. you know, that's not going to work out. It'll work out temporarily. Everybody will have a good time until you're tired of, you know, uh, of, of that game. And, and then you, you know, so that kind of stuff, that was the biggest turnoff with a lot of LA, LA stuff back in my day when I was out and about all the time. I, you know, well, I just, LA is a different um, place, you know, yeah, it's it a is. different place. But every, every place is a different every, place. Every region has its own flavor. So, you know, if you move to some other area, you would find that women probably wouldn't do that or. Uh, I don't know. I think there's a little bit of everything everywhere, just with a different accent. You know, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, I don't know. Uh, look, I'm not well, knocking that. If the woman's priority is a financially stable man, then it, she'll, it's important to her. What do you do? Yeah. You know? So she's going to come from that position there are ways to to soften it but that is a priority and she'll want to know eventually yeah. no i i'm not saying not to know but it was just i don't know it's, it, I, believe me you get that feeling it was like they're debating whether to talk to you or not oh, and, I you know see. you know yeah. and i'm just saying i i knew that you know there was girls that i used to see and, I, and and they'd be with these you know overweight japanese guys you know because they were paying their rent you know and and i'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that because maybe she did like them or but she liked them enough you know i, I don't know it's like to me to me i have to really be attracted to you i don't care how much money you have if i'm not attracted to you i don't give a shit because i i can't i can't fake it i'm not a good like i really like this girl if i don't really i mean i like you but i don't love you how about that yeah yeah i so understand that's, that's just me i'm a you know yeah. what do i know i'm a guy it's important to know who you are and what is yeah. important to you all right so i know we went through this again but i want to ask you because we're running out of time already but the I want you to just real quick re go tell everybody, I mean, the advantage to like investing in themselves by investing in you or uh, what's the, you know, advantage to having you as that dating coach uh, to, to saving all the heartache and the years of, of, of disappointment? Well, because I am experienced with the relationships between men and women and the psychology of men and women in this dating arena, I can share my guidance with a woman who is open to tips and strategies to find and date the man of her dreams as quickly as possible. And what I like to do is find out basically who she is, what she prefers, what her values are, and then I can recommend the dating apps that are most appropriate for her with the most kind of men that she wants to attract. And so we go into this mode of writing that dating profile, gathering together the pictures, preparing her for conversation and setting up her priorities in such a way that the kind of men who contact her will most likely be the kind that she would want to go out with. And if they're not, then she doesn't have to waste her time, her precious time, or their precious time dealing in, with people who just, she knows that she's not going to want a second date with or a third or to develop a relationship with. So working with a specialist, an expert such as myself, shaves off the learning curve for how to date effectively with the dating apps. And what usually happens with my people is that they meet someone offline, even though they've been practicing online, uh, meeting people and, and uh, getting to know them. It's interesting. They, they tend to meet people offline because they're always prepared by looking good and acting well to attract people. So this energy starts to happen where they can attract better qualities of people who match their priorities. 
That makes sense. I mean, because I've always said whether you have roommates or or people that you date and move in and get married, if you put on a facade, an act of who you want them to perceive you to be, if you spend enough time around anybody, they're going to figure you out eventually, sooner or later. So you might as well be yourself because how long can the can the charade last? And and but there's a lot of that that goes on. A lot of people who just fake it. It does. There is a lot that, of that that goes on, but we have all kinds of guidance that can help us cut to the chase. And, and that's what I do. I support my ladies to pay attention to the feelings they get and to the, and in the intuition that they have. Because, you know, people can look good on paper, but when you meet them, you go, oh, my God. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a disconnect. <laughs> so pay attention to those feelings of, oh, there's a disconnect and not spend the time with that person. I got gotcha. you. As we start to uh, finish out this whole thing, I just want to I always end up doing something like this. And I, I again, I want to ask again, because I want to talk about Patricia, because it's you that brings this and you that makes this. But when I've talked to you in the past and talked to you, even you know, in the weeks prior to booking you for the show in the months or whatever it was, I always had this feeling like Patricia's pretty happy in her own relationship. Oh, and for sure. We've been together for, it'll be 51 years in May. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we've, we have uh, gone through many, many things and we're still together, which is quite a wonderful miracle. And uh, I'm delighted to have met him so many years ago. I went to a party and uh, decided to network with everybody in the room until I came back to the front door. And if this man that I had was expecting for some reason, I didn't know where he was, but I was expecting somebody special to come in. If he wasn't there, by the time I got back to that front door, I was going to go home and write a paper that it was due on that Monday. But as I was talking to a soldier, he did come. He stepped across the threshold at 2 a.m. in the morning, and I realized that somebody was looking at me. So I said, I looked and I said, oh, there's my husband. And I kept talking to the man I was talking to. And when he finally asked me to dance, and he, he looked, reached for my hand, and I just felt the spark run up my arm to my heart. And I said, ah, that is my husband. So we chatted and didn't agree with some things, but we were amicable about it. And we made a date for the next weekend and we've been having date night ever since for the last 50 years <laughs> through children and mortgages and the whole nine yards. So I have a formula based on that particular meeting that I love to share with my clients so that they can formulate their own happily ever after because it's it's right there plain as day you have to have expectations you have to look good you have to have a strategy you have to have a vision and then you have to go out and meet people and know the ones that fit that framework that you've already envisioned patricia you're you're telling a story that is like a fairy tale i mean you are so lucky and so blessed i mean that's what everybody i think ultimately not everybody but most people would want is that you get like eighteen thousand gold stars 51 years together and again i think most people we live in this day and age that a bump in the road and they go that does it i'm out you know you there's a lot of ups and downs in life and and having to know that okay how to get through it without saying i quit i think i quit is our biggest problem with this world nowadays well i admit that it does take uh, the ability to just go to the mat and work out any issues or conflicts. And I'm one of those people who, you know, I'll go to the mat with you. You know, I, we have got to get this straightened out. I'm not, I'm not letting go. So I'm committed to my relationship and there needs to be commitment if we're going to make something work. Both people have to have the commitment. That's right. It, it takes two. There's a difference between thinking, oh, I can, 
oh, no, I'm done at the least thing. So, you know, you, that's a priority for me, the commitment. The grass isn't always greener on the other side, but you don't find that out until after you've destroyed everything, thinking that the grass is greener on the other side when you had a good thing and just a little, again, that bump in the road that's in, in, in when you really think about it in time, it's a minuscule compared to 51 years. I mean, that's, that's amazing. And that's, you don't hear as much of that nowadays. I mean, I envy those people. I really, truly do. And you're one of the lucky ones. Well, thank you. No, I, I want to meet your husband one day because you said something to me over the phone on our, one of our last conversations. I go, he sounds like my kind of guy. <laughs> he just he sounds, like, he sounds like his he sounds like his head is, his head is in the right place. He's he's a, I like the way he thinks, you know. So yeah, uh, you one have day a lot in common, believe me. <laughs> when, when I'm in when I'm in that area, I'm going to go out of my way to make sure that uh that uh you know i i, I want to meet this man because again i've had all this time with you but i know he's a very big part of you and uh and you're a one lucky girl that's all i can say i mean for both of you for for your efforts to being where you're at yes all right here's what we're going to do i because we are out of time uh but i think we got your message i hope we got your message uh, across uh whoops there we go i want to tell people uh to get in touch with you if they want to learn more about you they want to contact you they want to hear more have questions for you they can find you you have a website uh www.manifestyoursoulmateacademy.com and do i have that right that's correct and Good. you can see where you can get some time on my calendar and i'd love to speak to people in a strategy session it's free and we can find out, uh, give you more tips and strategies for how to do your dating effectively. Yeah, I, I, I can't stress it enough that, again, I'm going to go back to this people spend money where they want to spend it. Somebody might say, oh, no, I don't want to pay for a service. But yet you pay for all kinds of things. And when it comes to your personal life, you're tanking and you won't invest in yourself, so to speak. So this is where you need to man up or woman up. If you're really that serious about it, give Patricia a shot, take, you know, talk to her and then decide and, and give it a shot because think about all the time you waste and life is short. So shorter let's, let's, and shorter. <laughs> oh God, it sure is. I mean, I, you know, when you think about all the people that, you know, you lose in your life for one reason or another and thank God, I mean, we're all, you know, the ones that we're all still here and I got a lot of things I want to hang around. I want to, I want to be around to annoy people for a while, especially my daughter and hopefully she'll have kids and I, I just want to be that guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But but again, life is good. I mean, you know, it's as much of a struggle we're going through. Everybody deserves to be loved and have love. And the problem is there's a lot of people. I know a lot of people that are lonely. I mean, they 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 thrive deep down. They want that person. But I don't I, I can't tell them what to do. It's not my job. But you, my dear, are the perfect person to to go to to say hey what am i doing wrong or what do i need to do and your their lives may change yes so, okay yes. well that's this right there www.manifest your life soul uh, your life soulmate academy dot com get a hold your of soulmate academy <laughs> what did i say you added life <laughs> oh sorry life is short okay all Look, right. it's all right there. Read the print. It's it's in print. Don't don't listen to me. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I'm on. I got. I took to, I, my medication. I think I overdid it. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> so, all right. Look, I want to thank you for uh, taking the time and coming on uh, because I truly believe that uh, there's there's people that that have this this uh, look. I'm gonna say this. So Bill hung in there. Bill just said thanks, guys, because Bill could have been one of the people who wanted to hear me bitch about politics last week. And then said, ah, uh, this isn't what I want. But Bill hung in there and he said, thanks, guys. So thank you, Bill. And uh, so, you know, and coming from guys, you would think guys are a lot hard, more hardcore. They don't want to hear this sappy stuff. But I think everybody, you know, needs to hear this kind of stuff. Because, again, I think everybody deserves to be loved or, or, and to love. So very for cool. Sure. For sure. I, I, again, thank you for taking the time and spending again with me. And, uh, and maybe we'll do this again sometime down the road because I love to hear the advancements and what's going on and, and, and you know, things change. We're always going to different levels and, and things like that. But um, 
Uh, let me get Bill right there and then back to you again. But for everybody, real quick, one more time, last time, and let's see if I can get it right. www.manifestyoursoulmateacademy.com. Contact Patricia. And and it, it, just do me a solid. Just say, hey, I saw you on the Peter G Show. And, you know, I'm willing to listen to you know, just so I can. She'll know that, like, OK, well, actually, there's more than three people that watch Peter. So that's great. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> all right. Listen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank your husband for giving us the time together right here. And um, and uh, again, for anything you need in the future, you're more than welcome to. You know, you reached out to me this time, which I was really glad because I forget I get. I'm very distracted. I'm one minute. I'm right here. And then, oh, look, a squirrel. I'm just it's getting that crazy. But you bring something to the table and I love you for it. And thank you for for like doing what you do, because there's people out there. I, I truly believe that need you, but they can't get you if they don't know you exist. So well, thank you, Peter. All right. Thank listen, you you wave to everybody and God bless you. And again, I look forward to uh, to hearing the saying, hey, somebody actually saw me on the show. So that was great. <laughs> yeah. That's it. All right. Last look at Miss Patricia Fuqua. Are you Cajun? Are you is that that's well, like a New Orleans is Creole. Fuqua Creole. Is, yeah. is Creole. Yeah. Southwest Louisiana. <laughs> is 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 that uh, is that your husband's name or do you see uh, someone's name? Wow, yeah. Fuqua. There you go. That's you can't get too much more, you know, down down New Orleans, Louisiana than that. No, <laughs> uh, I was when I was thinking about it, I go, I gotta ask her because that that is so like again, I grew up mostly in Pensacola and, and it's yeah, uh, there's a whole you know a lot of that. I said I gotta ask her if I remember, so I just did, and not that anybody cares, but I feel better. Yeah. Anyway, all right, you thank him, you give him a big hug for letting you you spend time with me over here and my people, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Patricia Fuqua, call her, find her uh website, go ask her questions because if you don't ask questions, shame on you. And that's all I can tell you because life, once again, is short. Don't waste a moment. It's not that hard to just look her up and then just do a little typing and, you know, get together, see what's going on. All right, sweetheart. Thank you so much. Wave to everybody. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. And uh, I look forward to seeing how uh, we're doing down the road. All right. All right. Take care. All right. I love you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And there's that. Love can't say it enough hang on a minute speaking of love oh super smooth look i had patricia come on because i do realize that there's a lot of people that are lost i i know i know a lot of girls too that i friends of mine i've known since we were teenagers and they've just had things widowed in bad relationships, divorce, whatever, and they're, and they're they're beautiful women that have a lot to offer, but don't date anymore. And I'm thinking to myself, why such a waste? So spend a little time. Contact Patricia. Spend a little time, and if you're into it and things make sense, just spend a couple of dollars. Think of all the money you spend on a concert or something. Concerts are a fortune anyway, and and you know invest in yourself. What's your happiness worth to you? That's all I can say. I like it. All right, there's the website one more time over there. www.manifestyoursoulmateacademy.com That's what I would do if I were you. Uh, again, you owe it to yourself, all right? Don't forget, next week, where am I here? Oh, yeah, next week, comedian Rodney Norman on this show, okay, the king of super awesomeness will be taking a break from saving the world, and he's going to be on this show. That's right. Anybody who's familiar with Rodney Norman would uh, would know what I'm talking about, and you'll tune in because he's super awesome, and he lives a super awesome life, and he talks about how you too can be super awesome and not worry about things and live in the here and now and all that stuff. So if I were you, I would tune in. Rodney Norman, comedian Rodney Norman on this, the show, the Peter G show every Wednesday, like clockwork, 6 PM Pacific, 8 PM central and 9 PM on the East coast. God willing. Right. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Please, please, please. I ask you again, Whatever platforms you're watching me on, your YouTubes, your Facebooks, LinkedIn's, 
X. Please follow and subscribe, okay? I need the help. I'm getting battered over on certain platforms for being real. They like when I do all this clean cut stuff, but the minute we start talking about real life, uh, it gets to be a problem and they censor me, you know? And again, you can't please everybody. I'll keep on going, but please, I know there's a lot of people that watch and a lot of people just don't hit the subscribe because they're watching. They're going, why I'm watching you. I need your help. I'm asking you. I never used to really, really ask, say I need your help, but I need your help because they're, I'm, I'm in war. I'm at war with two specific platforms. I'm not going to mention them, TikTok. Uh, but, you know, it really bugs me, YouTube. But um, please, I appreciate you. And for those of you who can't watch, you can Google Peter G Show podcast. Put an earbud in your ear. You can listen to any of the shows. There's almost 400 shows. All kinds of topics. You know. If you know, you know. Right? You do. I have another sip. Almost done. Woo! Like it. So please... Do yourself a favor and go and listen and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. It's free. For God's sakes, people, it's free. I don't ask anything from you but your love and attention to watch things that ultimately benefit you. I Don't you agree? I agree. I'm in agreement. All right. Told you what's going on next week, and that's basically it. So for those of you, I just want to also remind you that life is really, really weird. Getting, I mean, there's, there's so much going on. And if you watch my end of the month shows, I I don't even have enough time to go over all the things that I feel is a major problem and lots of distractions. Living is very, very hard. I It's hard to go to the grocery store. You drop 50 bucks on nothing, a bag of nothing. And for those of you who have children and families to feed, I feel you. The people that are screwing this all up don't go grocery shopping. They don't have to. They have people that do it for them. They have no clue. They've lost touch of reality so life's a bitch i guess is what i'm saying it's hard but we are all here and the only way we can make it better is if we pay attention take a deep breath and we just keep on being aware of what's going on saying hey i'm watching and i'm not silent and i'm, I'm not going to take it anymore enough is enough but at the same time they're poking the bear you don't have to take it all right you don't have to be an ass but you don't have to take a bunch of crap from people either Let's all stick together. They're doing a good job at trying to divide us, and it's working. Let's for, let's see through the woods and beyond the bullshit, all right? I love you. If you disagree with me, I still love you. I respect the fact that you don't get what I have to say, but I'm not going to not like you, as opposed to the ones who keep you know writing to me telling me what a freaking idiot I am or I'm a clown or this and that. Cool. Some people you can't help, but even those people keep on watching. So... All I want to tell you is it's all good. Hang in there. We're all people and we all live on this planet. We got to stick together. We have children that we want to raise. So to be decent human beings, be kind. All right. Just try. I know it's not easy. Just be kind. My name is Peter G. Oh, real quick. Let me just look. Thank you, Bill. God, Bill. You're... I got to put this up. Oh, Bill, please. Please. No, please, Bill. No, it's up. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Bill. Oh, really? No, no, no. No, it's all good. Listen, it's just life. I mean, I, I love life. I took on this show because of what's going on and people, and people need to hear stuff. I don't know a damn thing. I'm just, what I talk about comes from me. There's no teleprompters. It comes from me. And I had somebody last week, I'm going to do this and then I'll leave you alone. But he, Bill just kind of reminded me. I said something about seven days a week, 24, I said 24 seven. I don't even remember what the topic was, but I said 24 seven. Oh, the, the media. I talked about how the media lies. The media lies 24 seven. And I said, the media lies 24 seven, seven days a week. And I repeated myself 24 seven, seven days a week. The media is lying to you which is the truth. And again, I can't keep showing every individual that says, prove it to me. Open your eyes. Go look up the, the Smith-Mund Act. I'm going to put it up next next month. I'm going to have to. Either way, the guy comes on, went out of his way to say, your redundancy is annoying. And I answered him because I don't normally answer comments, but I happen to see it. 
So he was annoyed, he says, because seven days a week, 24-7, 24-7, seven days a week is the same thing. Well, I wasn't thinking. I was speaking from my gut, my head, whatever. So I meant well, but it was repetitive because it meant the same thing. But he missed the point. The point was I was talking about the media and I got on to him and he says, oh, I see how you are. I was just giving you some constructive criticism. I can take constructive criticism, but he was just being nasty and he missed the point. That was my problem. I'm not a bad guy. We'd probably be best friends. I don't know. I get along with most people. I'm going on and on. I didn't mean to, but I, I, I have to make these points in hopes that somebody sees this and understands that life, you know, I got friends I grew up with that are, you know, we don't all think alike and that's okay, but I'm not going to hate you for it. It's like you sometimes, maybe I'm wrong. And if I'm wrong, I'll say, hey, I'm wrong. But chances are I might not be. And But a lot of people hate to be wrong. But don't say, well, screw you. You're a friggin' idiot. There's a lot of that going around. They've divided right, left. I hate both sides. And as some, a lot of people say, right and left wing belongs to the same bird. Heard that from a personal friend on a phone conversation just Saturday. And that's the truth. Stick together, people. Don't let them separate us, all right? I do love you. And that's all, that's all I got to say about that. I love you guys. Again, I didn't mean to go over, but I can do that because it's my in my show. <laughs> and I don't have to stick to any time schedule. But I love you. All right. My name is Peter G. Thanks for watching the show. Stay tuned next week and the week after that and the week after that. But please subscribe. All right. It's that simple. I love you guys. And peace out. Peter G. Show. Peter G. Show. Divorced and single.